Hello and welcome back to Daniel Drives, where today we're fitting a new head unit. Okay, so here is the head unit itself. It's a Sony DSX-B700. And let's have a look what's actually in the box. Before we do that, let me show you this. This is the actual fascia thing that's needed so you can actually use a double din radio in the Panda, um, which is not the original one. Um, and this was about 10 or 12 pounds um, on online somewhere else. I'll put the link in the description if I remember. You know how forgetful I can be sometimes. And here's the actual box. I tried to package it away all nicely, how, it, how you know how it got how I got it. But um, as with many things like this, it's impossible to get it back in the box. So I've just settled it like this. So we've got the all of the manuals, instruction manuals. Hopefully we won't need them and hopefully it will be straightforward, but we've got them anyway. And um, we've got another little bracket, which I'll show you what that's for in a minute. And here is the actual main event. If I can get out the box. Here we are, wrapped in quite a lot of plastic. Um, if we take that off, we can reveal the head unit itself. Here we go. The doubled in Sony, if I come around the other side, I can see what I'm showing you. Here it is, it's got no CD player. Now this is something I wanted, I did want a CD player, but um, I've kind of settled for having no CD player because this has Bluetooth connectivity and you know with streaming and stuff you use CDs less and less so I've kind of come to the conclusion that it's maybe not a necessity. Um, it's also got you can call people it's got an external microphone that you sort of hide away in the headliner and have by your rearview mirror. Um, it's got extra bass as well as with quite a few Sony products. It's got a USB port and auxiliary obviously and this all lights up like a lot of head units you can get now. Um, that are on touchscreen. The majority of them are touchscreen and I wasn't really in favour of having a touchscreen inside the Panda because I like having buttons. I think they're more intuitive, easy to use and this one was the one that I thought would look best in the car but the knob lights up, all of these little lines, they all light up and in the dark it should look quite fantastic. So that's the front end of it. Um, the back end of it is quite single din actually. It's quite narrow um, so hopefully that makes it easy to fit. It might be a complete pain in the backside, who knows? Got all your inputs here. We've got the input for the microphone. Um, there's plenty of inputs for your subwoofers as well. Now, fitting a subwoofer is something I would like to do down the line to enhance the audio system even more. But for now, I'm just gonna fit this and see what this does to the system. So that's pretty much everything in the box, I think. Um, there is some brackets and stuff like that. There's the external microphone there. Um, and there's also some clips. I've been told I cannot break, very easy to break, but I can't do that. And here, some wiring. So let's get it in the Panda and let's fit it. So this is the original head unit that's currently in the Panda. Um, and this was offered on the later 169 Pandas, as well as the 100 HP models as standard, obviously. Um, the earlier Pandas had a single DIN system with sort of the slot there where you can put your CDs, but the later Pandas had these double DIN style radios. Now, it says it's Blaupunkt, but I'm not sure if it is a Blaupunkt made stereo. Could just be the name, who knows? But yes, it looks good. It fits in with the theme of the interior. It looks good. Obviously, the font of the writing goes to the climate control and everything else in this car but it's just not a very good system, really. Um, it doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't have AUX as standard. Now we have fitted AUX uh, around the back and it's wired in through the glove box, so we do have an AUX cable. It does have a CD player, but obviously there's no AUX you know, around here, which can be a pain sometimes. There's no Bluetooth, and also it doesn't sound very good. It sounds okay, but when you turn up the volume, um, which I tend to, and my dad does as well because we're massive music fans, um, it, clearly gets past its limit and it starts to panic and the sound gets very mm, I want to say muffled I don't know if that's the right word so yeah it's not great so you've got their FM and you can change through your radio stations and whatever um, you've got CD as well click it again and we've got the AUX um, there's AM radio who uses AM radio I've no idea um, and here you've got the if I go on here um, if I go on audio then you've got the bass EQ preset, loudness off, fader, balance, FM treble, all the usual things really. And here is the menu as well where you can actually go through a lot of the radio settings, auto turn off, speed, volume, blah, blah, blah. 
So yes, it's a very easy system to use and I do like it for that. And it's definitely going to be kept for in the future. For example, if I, were, if, you know, I was ever going to sell this car, it's good to have the original. But to be honest, I doubt I will. I'm going to be one of them people that says, it's a keeper, it's a forever car, but really who knows. Um, but I am going to keep it anyway because it is the original and it's nice to have it. But in the meantime, I have got a new system to fit. But first, we need to take this radio out and we need to fit the fascia. I believe that's the first thing we, th we should do. Step number one is to remove the head unit. This is the last time we're going to see it in this car. Um, that's, you know, unless I decide to put the old one back in for whatever reason. So I think in the glove box, that's right, I've got some tools. Now you do need these tools if you want to remove the, uh, the head unit. And we had these to fit the auxiliary thing around the back of the radio. Um, so basically there's two holes here. You need to put these pins in and basically eventually it'll click and you can sort of wiggle the radio out. There's no proper way to do it. It's literally just stab them things in, like so, like that, and then sort of wiggle it out. And you can see already, I can see it's released. Wiggling about in there. This uh, Stig air freshener is in the way, so you can, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, and I can sort of unclip it. Not sure if I've actually got these the right way around. It is a bit of a pain to do. I'm going to see if I can put the seat forward so I can reach it a bit better. Let me have a look. Oh, yes. There we go. Come on. Out you come. I don't want to break it. <laughs> it's always the same. This would have been easy if I wasn't doing it on camera, but now I am. I think the panda likes to play tricks on me a bit. Come on cut to the bit where I finally get it out. And finally, there we are. I had the pin things the wrong way around. One thing I must mention is you've got to be careful not to scratch the actual face of the radio because that's just not nice, is it? So there we go. That simply slides out of its slot like so. And just as I remembered when we did this, probably 2020, I think, when we did the AUX, it's very tight, the cables aren't long, so there isn't a lot of leeway. Um, so you find yourself having to rest it on the gear stick and stuff like that. If I actually put it in third gear, I'd made myself a little table. Um, but there we are, there is the head unit removal. So what I need to do now is disconnect the wiring and then see if I can get the new one to fit, um, to, you know, get it all to work. So let's do that. So I'm disconnecting the aerial. Um, and there's a lot of these little clip things, and yes, they are very, very fiddly, <laughs> as I remembered from when we last, last did this. I really don't want to scratch the dash, because that would absolutely heartbreak me. There we are, at last, I've managed to get three of the little connectors off. There's just the really big one now, and I would give them names, but I really can't. Um, so I wonder if I can show you, if I can zoom in in the edit. So here's the back of it, and I've just taken these three off that are connected together. I believe you can separate them. So it's this little connection here that I'm really struggling to get off. So if you're doing this job, good luck with that, because it's an absolute pain in the backside. Right, one thing I've been told online numerous times, and one thing I said I'd do, but I've literally just forgotten, is check there's a CD in the CD player before you disconnect everything. I just turned the ignition on to see if it still works. Obviously the radio doesn't, but the CD player does. And uh, John Lennon just came on. So if you want to keep your John Lennon CD, make sure you eject it, because otherwise, when you disconnect the radio, you're gonna have no power to eject the CD and it's in there for life. <laughs> so there we are. The radio is now out after a bit of swearing and help from my brother. Um, those connectors are an absolute pain. And what I use to get it out is quite simply a butter knife. Um, with a bit of grease or something on it. So there we go, that is now out. So now I need to, I think, remove this tray because I think there's actually one I need to fit instead. I really don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm as new to this as you might be. Um, so there we go. And also I was wrong, it's not a John Lennon, John Lennon CD. It's now 100 hits, The Legends. So there we go, got that one out. So I'm gonna put you back in the tripod and let's continue. Just one more thing, I do recommend putting a tea towel over the dash because otherwise you will end up scraping it and that's not nice. What you need to do now is get your ratchet and you need to take out the original slotting 
device thing where the old head unit went in because you should have a new one that comes with your head unit. If you've got the Sony, then you will have it. That goes in and that will ensure that it fits very, very nicely. Okay, so a lot of time has passed and it's been not great. And that's only because this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, I've never done this in my life. So I've basically taken out the original, I don't know what you call it, I suppose brackets, massive big bracket where the old radio went in. Managed to take that out. One of the screws um, were, well, the thread was stripped, which didn't help at all. Um, and now I've got the new sort of bracket to go in. But I believe the fascia has to go in before this goes in. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, and hopefully I can do this um, without a million things going wrong. So somewhere in the box which I've got here as you can see I've got my brand new phone which I do YouTube videos on there iPhone 13 so I've got wide angle um, I've got a wide angle camera so it basically means you can see all of the mess that's around me currently because um, trust me it's it is a massive mess um, and hmm, I'm missing something which is not great at all um, I wonder if it's down here Got them, they're here. So these are the uh, plastic clip things that go on the fascia, so it clips in place. Simple as, really. So I need to take these out of the packet without losing them. Um, and I've only got enough. Um, I don't have any extra, I've only got enough. So I cannot break these, and I've been told they are extremely brittle. So I've got to be really careful. Um, and I know already that they're gonna get broken. Because that's me, that's me doing these jobs. Um, so let's have a look. Let's see how these attach. So in true Daniel Droy's fashion, I stopped filming just as it all got quite exciting. Um, and that's probably because my dad came home and then he, he helped me basically and I forgot I was filming, maybe? Um, I even had my girlfriend helping me at one point, which was great. Um, yeah, so basically everything came out of the car and then it was a matter of finding the order of everything to go in. That was the hardest part. And Basically, I'm going to try and explain this now visually. It was the fascia, which is the outside plastic bit that went in first, and then the cage, and then the actual radio, and then this little surround thing as well. So it all went in, and it's all in fairly securely um, after a bit of you know pushing and shoving, basically. Everything's connected, and the radio works, and I am so impressed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you in a bit closer. We're going to have a look at this Sony head unit which I absolutely adore. Okay, so here is a head unit. I've got you in a position where hopefully you can see it a bit better. Um, let's turn the ignition on. So when you turn the ignition on, the head unit fires up and it fires up really, really quickly. The blown punk system would take a while and then your radio would start playing and then it'd go, Accompagno, which is a really bad impression of the Italian lady that would tell you about the Bluetooth or something, even though the Bluetooth doesn't really work because it's Bluetooth from 2006 and 2007. Um, so this system is very, very, very quick to fire up. My only gripe is in light uh, circumstances, let's say, when it's quite bright and sunny, the screen is quite dark to see. I can see it fine. I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly in person. Actually, I think the camera is making it quite flickery. Um, it's not flickery in person, it's just my camera doing that. So you've got your radio and stuff. I'm not going to actually play anything because that would go against copyright rules and stuff, but Radio 1's playing. Um, and basically you've got your source here and you've got USB, obviously radio, let me do that again, uh, Bluetooth audio, radio, USB and aux basically. Um, and I've spent a lot of my time actually on Bluetooth audio which is really, really good. But let's put it on radio anyway just for now, make sure the radio is turned down. Uh, here I can press call and then I can call people, although I don't want to call people. Um, it's probably calling somebody random right now, I don't really want it to do that. Um, and if you've told it so basically it will come up on your phone do you want to sync your contacts when you connect to bluetooth device if you click yes then you can click through all of your recent callers and stuff like that which basically means that when you're on the move you can call people from the system without even touching your phone which is great um, you've got next track previous track here's your usb dongle thing there's the aux and you've got your numbers here for your radio presets and also repeat song and shuffle and stuff like that P play pause um, yeah, that's good. If you click the center button here, you've got your settings, you've got display. I'm not actually sure if you can see this. I wonder if I can zoom in. Uh, there we go, you can see this now. Display, Bluetooth, Sony app, general, sound, and then display again. So if I click on display, 
I've got brightness, but that's currently on 10. Um, so if I go back, um, sound sync, dimmer, brightness, there you go. So that's that. Um, I can change the color. So currently I've got it on rainbow, but I can change it to red, I can change it to amber. Let me zoom out again. There's another amber, there's a yellow, there's a green, cyan, blue, purple, pink, rose, white, sunset, which kind of changes through the colors of, you know, orangey colors, aqua, twilight, custom. And I tend to have it on rainbow just because it changes through the colors. And I think it's quite a nice little quirk, really. Um, there's your Bluetooth settings, audio device, ringtone. So you can have it as a Sony ringtone, which sounds a bit bizarre, or the ringtone you'd have on your mobile phone anyway. Auto answer, auto pair, all the usual Bluetooth stuff. You get the Sony app, so you can download the Sony Connect app, I think it's called, and you can control basically the radio from your phone. You can turn the volume up and down, and it's so intuitive and actually really quite impressive to use. General settings, you can have a beep if you want to. There you go. You can probably hear that, but I tend to have that off just because it sounds a bit annoying after a while. Auto turn off, USB auto play, um, traffic announcements, stuff like that, demo, clock, whatever. Um, sound, you've got a load of equalizers and presets and stuff like that. And yeah, there's lots to do. But while I'm on the topic of sound, this has got extra bass. This is a button you click and it's extra bass off, extra bass one and extra bass two. Now I am a guy that likes bass in my music. So I tend to have extra bass on two just because I think it sounds great. Um, so there we go. That is sort of a run through of the head unit. I really like it. It's good to use. Everything feels very quality. And I, as, as I said, I can't really play you anything, but skipping through the radio stations, it basically connects FM connectivity. It connects so quickly. Like you can skip through the radio stations in milliseconds. It's, it's really, really good. Um, so yeah, I really like using it. It's great to use and I can recommend it a lot. So these head units, I think are around 150 pounds, but this was on offer at Halfords actually for about 120. So if you're after one of these, I'd check Halfords to see if that offer's still around. It might not be by the time you watch this video. Um, but also you can get secondhand ones, I believe, on eBay. Um, and I think the previous generation of this head unit actually had a CD player, which is something this one doesn't have, um, which is something I'm gonna have to get used to because I do like CDs. I'm a bit of an old person when it comes to music. But there we go, I do like this head unit a lot. So there we go then, that is it for this episode of Daniel Drives. It's great to have the Panda back on the channel. Obviously the previous video, which you haven't already checked out, is one that I filmed earlier on today, which is why I'm wearing the same clothes. And that was basically a reintroduction to this car, because it's been seven months since it's actually appeared on the channel. Uh, rest assured, it will be on the channel more, because I'll be starting to drive it. Um, super excited, so do check out the previous video because it's quite a good one, quite high production as well, it's, it's a nice video. And it even involves some revving, we do love revving, especially with the custom exhaust which sounds bonkers. <laughs> Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the Sony head unit and me getting very frustrated trying to remove the old head unit. Um, it's probably just as well I didn't film the install of this one because I think that was even more sweary. Um, so there we go. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to Daniel Drives and you can follow me on social media. That's Instagram and Twitter at DanielCars05. But if you're sick of me, then stick to YouTube because there's lots of content on here and there'll be more coming up very soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.